Okay. Yeah, thank you, Javier. So I'm going to give uh, the second talk on architectures. Uh, so it's going to be kind of the last talk where there are many images. So from tomorrow on, speech, and language, and, and text. Um, the idea is just to give you some, some terminology, mainly terminology that, that when you hear it, you have some idea of what, what they are talking about. So again, I'll try to follow a bit this chart, but I must say that for today, this chart is a bit too short for what I want to explain. Um, so if you remember, yesterday I talked about uh, a network called AlexNet, and that was uh, a breakthrough in machine learning especially and special computer vision because it solved this task called ImageNet was so complicated, like if an image just uh, tell what, which objects are in the image. And the idea is the main contribution of that, of that network, so that's this network you have here on the left, I just put it on vertical, um, is that it had like several layers. And so the people so well, oh, just by adding so many layers, we can really improve our performance. So, you know, this ImageNet challenge, like a, they call it like the computer vision Olympics or the machine learning Olympics, kind of, kind of. So they celebrate every year, not every four years. And so the, 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 the year after, so people who want to participate, to participate they, they thought, okay, so if going deeper is a good idea, why don't we try to go just add more layers? And when they tried that, they, they noticed that there were so many parameters, it was hard to train, so they, they needed new architectures. And they came up with the architecture you have on, on the right. This architecture is called GoogleNet. And this architecture, it has many, many tricks. But one of the main tricks I want to explain, that's the, the, why I'm talking about architectures, it's what, it's what they call the inceptual mo model. I, there are all these ellipses marking them in the architecture, so there are nine inception models. And in each of them, there's something called network in a network, uh, which is, uh, I'm making a zoom now, okay, so now I'm making zoom on these ellipses. And each of these ellipses, you, you have this, which is kind of having, uh, Maybe you can, you can think that this is one network, this is another network, this is another network, this one, okay, it's just a filter. But, you know, for each of these models, there are like different networks that they are trained uh, all together. And by doing that, they were able to capture uh, different uh, spatial resolutions and well, exp explain the paper. And by doing that, they were able to really outperform the performance from the previous year and train it with, uh, with more networks. But then it was another year, um, people had to learn the lectures, and they say, oh yeah, so if you, I want to improve these guys, I just need to go deeper, and I'm going to win ImageNet, right? So, uh, so th that's what actually the, the inceptual model that I just mentioned, it was called inceptual model because Leonardo DiCaprio in this movie uh, called Inception, I think, or whatever, uh, it says that we must go deeper. So, so but the idea is, is from this one, but the, the, the year after, they still went deeper, right? How did they do that? They said, okay, yeah, let's, let's, let's try to just add more, more layers to a network. Actually, this is not an ImageNet layer, it's another one, uh, but it's, it's fine for what I want to explain. And they say, okay, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but the blue line, it's, uh, so this error, so the lower the better, and the blue line, it's uh, half a layer uh, network with 18 layers. They say, yeah, let's add more layers, like 34 layers, right, uh, in a, like a regular architecture. And uh, you see that was not that, that obvious because then they noticed that the, it was not training properly, that uh, here the error is, is, so the red is over the blue, so this is bad because the error is worse, right? And they noticed that they were not able to, to, to it was not just a matter of adding layers, they really had to think about something else. And they thought about something else and they proposed what's called uh, residual uh, connections or residual learning and the idea is that now, uh, instead of just going feed forward through the, through the filters, you allow some to skip some paths, to allow data to skip some of the filters. And this idea has uh, kind of exploited in the, in the last years. But this became what's called the res, uh, network called ResNet. And, and they actually, I think there are the charts, so they, they actually managed to, to improve. So this is with, when you don't use res, uh, residual connections, that's when you use it. And as here you can see that the red, uh, one, the 34 layers, was able to improve uh, the 18 layers by adding to this trick, okay, in, in a network that is explained in, in the paper. So by doing this trick, they, that was a team from Microsoft, they, they kind of uh, beat, I uh, think that before, uh, the network on the left, I think there were 21 layers or 20 something. So that year, uh, Microsoft won uh, the ImageNet with 152 layers. 
network. Okay, so that's really, really deep and, and it works. And here you have the performance. Uh, this, this is the error on the image, ImageNet. Uh, so that was 2015 because this paper was published the year after. And that was the error they obtained that's called the ResNet. Uh, okay, ResNet. And Google Net is the one that I, I presented before. Yeah, so this way they could improve performance. And, and they kind of set some trending in the, in the world of architectures. So this has influenced uh, other papers. For example, there's this work uh, called Deep Cross Residual Learning for Multitask. Uh, here the idea is that if you have uh, different tasks which are similar, here the tasks, they, 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 these, they are like, this is just the, the end of, of, of a network. They were trying to predict, given an image, an adjective, or a noun, or pairs of adjectives and nouns. As these tasks, they are kind of uh, related. So you, for sure, you can, you can train three different networks independently and see what happens. You can do that. You, what you could do also, that's what most people do, is you, you train the first, the first layers of your network to analyze the image uh, in a common way. And just at the end, you create branches, uh, one to, create, to predict adjectives class, one to predict uh, uh, pairs of adjectives and nouns, and another one to predict nouns. So they are like different tasks, but they are so similar that it makes sense just to have some common layers. Or what, what in this paper they were proposing, like, okay, you, you, you branch this out, but as they are also kind of related, just create residual connections between them, and that improves performance again. So just adding like more connections between the layers. Uh, this year, for in, in the, the last, so last year, 2016 in ImageNet, um, the most, probably the most innovative uh, proposal, it was the, the second rank uh, proposal, it was called ResNext, and over there what they did, they kind of uh, combined the, re the idea of, of a ResNet, of the skip connection, with the idea of the inceptions, because they also created uh, up to 32 paths uh, with that, and by combining all this, they were also able to uh, beat uh, ResNet and, and also versions of the inception uh, network that, that uh, we suggested, okay? Uh, last time, the ImageNet, they didn't win because the winners, what they did, it's something called ensembles of networks, which is, okay, I don't, I don't just train one network, one model, but I train many uh, different alter alternatives and then I combine it. And that's that also kind of a trick. If you want to win a challenge, that's a quite a typical trick, okay? But scientifically, okay, we know that. That's, that's, that's why I didn't highlight it here. And here, just to conclude, the residual networks, that's the, the graphs that, that I try to, to repeat every time I, I, I find it in this chart. Okay, um, this idea of skipping connections, you, you can extend it much more, and you can do all kind of skipping connections. I'm going to show you some, some ideas, some examples of that. Uh, one of them, it was uh, this work for semantic segmentation, where they, they did is they, they made a very important work, uh, not just two years ago, and what they did is they, they, they look at the, the feature maps in intermediate layers and they, out, they put it directly to the end uh, to predict the output, which was a segmentation mask, which I guess that you don't know what it is, but it means that given an image, I predict for each pixel uh, the semantic class that you have, there, the object that it represents. If it's a person, a car, the road, yeah. And that was one of the first um, applications of, of this Technique, this technique is called skip connections because you are, you are allowing data to skip uh, part of the network. Another work uh, which is super popular in the field of medical imaging, it's called uh, UNET. And also here they, they are, skip, so this is like a convolutional network and what they are doing is they, they are allowing the feature maps, uh, for example here, and they, so this is the convolutional part, sorry, convolutional part, this is the convolutional. Remember that yesterday I told you that when you do the convolutions, you kind of lose resolution. The, the size of image of the feature maps becomes uh, smaller. And for some certain tasks, like segmentation, like if you are a, a surgeon and you, you have a, an, an MRI or whatever, and you want to segment whatever tumor, uh, you need to be very precise, especially if you want to do that automatically. Yeah. So then you have the convolutional part, you lose resolution, but then you want to, to scale back, and you have the deconvolutional part. I mentioned that yesterday. Okay, so and if you want to have good results, it has been seen that it's a good practice just that the feature maps of the high resolutions, you, you just, you put them somehow, you bring them somehow to, to their uh, counterparts in the deconvolutional part. Maybe you can sum them, you can concatenate them, you can do different things. 
but it's a good idea, let's say. And actually, this, this work, uh, I think there's Manel somewhere, yeah, over there. So he's working on this. Uh, so he's one of my students, and we are working on these architectures with, uh, with convolution or deconvolutional, and with all these skip connections that you have here run, uh, he's adding them uh, just to improve performance, and he has seen actually that that's the case, and he's doing all the stuff that you can ask him if, if you are interested. Okay, you can make things even more complicated, and just not do one simple skip connection, but just uh, make multi multiple skip connections, yeah, many of them. And then, of course, you're gonna get more parameters maybe, but uh, results also, and more computation, you need more computation, but results are also quite encouraging in, in that direction. These are called dense nets. And, um, and this, this work, uh, just notice that we are 2016, okay? So that this, we are like latest trend on, on, on computer vision. What they do is they, they create blocks of, of uh, dense connections, and they call it dense blocks. And by doing that, uh, they, they output for output form. Here you have ResNet. Uh, this is the error, so the lower the better. And so y they outperform ResNets and with uh, less flops, so with less computation. Yeah. And also uh, this idea, and similar to what Manel is doing, it has been also applied for um, semantic segmentation. Yeah, from a from actually from some, uh, there are some of the others which are Catalan, Adriana Romeno, David Vázquez. They are now in Montreal with Yoshua Benjamin, and they are some of these authors of this work. Okay, now I'm changing completely topic, uh, just to that, so I'm going to be very brief because we are kind of short of time, but just that these names uh, come to your mind. There's another trend in machine learning called, uh, let's call it differential neural computers. The idea is that when you, you have your network, and before uh, you have uh, Santi explain about the, the memory, the vanishing gradients, they want to get the memory. And uh, there are words that are really focusing on how to be able to store memory, that it stays there, that you don't forget anything of that. And you can go there and read and write memory information. Yeah? And that's this work, it's from uh, Google DeepMind. That's one of the most active uh, research labs nowadays. And it was published in Nature uh, in October, I think. So the idea is that you, you have a, a module, memory network a module that can be trained as well. And they, they use that, these, uh, these neural computers, they call it, um, to solve tasks like uh, answer questions about the, a metro uh, station, like how can I get from here to there? Okay, you need to look at the map and say, okay, you go from here for, to there. Yeah, so they, they, or who's the, uh, I don't know, the aunt of whoever, they had a, a family tree and they were able to answer these kind of questions. So now we are really dealing with knowledge, which is learned, but which is stored there. And it's not vanishing or anything like that, and that you read or, or write. Okay, um, oh, maybe this, this concept of differential neural machines, maybe you, you read as something called neural, neural Turing machines, because it was the, the predecessor uh, model. Uh, I think I, I put here yeah, the, the link to the paper. Okay, another task uh, which is very uh, powerful, it's reinforced model learning. Um, in this ca task, let's see if, if it goes very quickly, the idea is that you, you are not really supervising what the computer, sh what the network should do. You just say, okay, uh, do something, and if you do it well, I give you a reward. If you do it wrong, I, I, I don't give you a reward. That's, that's all you, you give, you tell the computer. That's reinforced model learning, okay? You're not, there are not really labels there. And these are uh, uh, a work in 2013 where people from uh, DeepMind, they, they, they applied this concept and they uh, let uh, the computer t to learn how to play this video game. Okay, but just giving as a feedback, just the score that you see at the top, that's all the computer uh, had, okay? He just had the pixels and the score. And say, okay, try to get the highest score and, and a joystick to play, yeah? So just try to, to improve the score, and that's all they did, yeah? And the, as here you're seeing like iteration, how it, by iteration, how the computer really learned that if he put the ball up there, he will get so, so many points. And that's the basic of reinforcement learning, as you, I, I hope, uh, this more idea how it works, yeah? So you look at the, at the pixels, and there are some neural network here, and the computer just controls, takes, takes some actions. So this company did that, and just a uh, few months later, or, or years, I'm not really sure, it's 2014, so a few months later, it was acquired by Google 
for quite a lot of amount of money, and now it's not DeepMind anymore, it's Google DeepMind. And it's home of many uh, brilliant machine learning researchers nowadays. So here is the, again, uh, what I just explained. Uh, I'll, I'll go a bit quickly here. You have, the idea is, is that you have a, a, an observation, the system generates an action and it gets a reward, and by doing that you can train networks uh, based on that. It's quite tricky, but you, you can do that, okay? Um, okay, just keep it. If you, this, this initial work from Atari, it was based on a network called uh, DeepQ Network, which is, you can implement it with a fully connected uh, neural network, it's just nothing really fancy, but that's how it was done. And where you just, uh, the naive solution would be just, you look at the state, um, so you look at, at the images, and, and for given a state and an action, you could pre predict a, a Q value, like, like how, how well you think it's going to work, that's what the network is gonna, is gonna, will tell you, and then you would actually uh, choose the action that gives you the highest Q value. That's a, a naive approach. You can make it, actually the, the final implementation was a bit different. They, they introduced the state, and then the network was predicting Q values for the different actions that it was able to perform. You can play with that in your browser. Uh, here, this guy here, it's Andre Karpati, another big, one of the big guys on machine learning, and he has a, a JavaScript library that allows you to train and run neural networks on your web browser. So you can play with it a little bit. And nowadays, the, the most uh, popular algorithm for informal learning, it's called actor critic, which is kind of similar. Uh, there's an actor that's giving actions, and there's a critic saying, yeah, you did it well, or you do it wrong. Yeah? <coughs> yeah, so there's an actor doing actions, and a critic doing well and doing wrong. So does, does this story remind you anything? Okay, so th this story reminds you, should remind you, <laughs> what Sandisa explained called generative adversarial network, and that's actually the, thanks for, for, the, for the answer. Uh, so by doing that, uh, reinforcement learning, they, I'm not sure if it was a re reinforcement, but just, just to say that, that maybe you saw it in the news, that with reinforcement learning, uh, now the, this Alpha Go computer was able to be the masters of the Go champion, uh, championship game, that I don't know how it works, but it's supposed to be very complicated. And in our group, we are also do working with re uh, reinforcement learning uh, for computer vision. So if you're interested, uh, we can discuss later on that. If you get into that, I suggest that you use something called OpenAI Gym and the reinforcement learning library from Keras. That's a, these are good tools if you're interested. And also there are other new tools appearing, uh, something called OpenAI Universe that allows you to play video games in a, in a private way. Okay, have a video here. And there's another, and some other videos. There was a final part of our cell networks, but I will just skip it because we are out of time and Santi explained it very well, okay? But I, give you, I will leave you the, the slides there. So let's leave it here. And if you have any questions of what I explained, 